With the arrival of Episode 3 brings a plethora of economic changes to the game's landscape. One of the biggest economical changes that we have felt in the game is how much agents are impacted by all the new price changes on the pistol round. That's why today we've made a helpful guide to help you navigate through that confusion. What is going on Pro Guides family? It's your host Sergeant Frost and today we will cover ideal pistol round loadouts for each agent. Let's not waste any more time and let's jump right into it. This video will feature a few ideal pistol round loadouts for some agents and we will explain why. Valorant's gameplay is very dynamic and a lot of agents play differently depending on different factors in game, such as attacker or defender side, map choice, and game plan. Some agents even buy certain loadouts depending on what part of the map they plan to attack or defend as well. With that being said, let's dive into our first contestant, Reyna. Reyna's ideal loadout is a ghost in both of her orbs. A lot of you may be scratching your heads thinking, but I always give flash on pistol rounds. Well, after the price changes to all the flashes in the game, 250 credits is steep for an ability that has the potential to be easily shot out and not give you a return on your investment. Additionally, Reyna wants both of her orbs because her orbs provide massive value on pistols where players can't get 150 HP. If Reyna's team can help her find a first kill, she can step on the gas pedal even harder by taking more fights since she will have more HP than anyone else on the map. This gives her a great advantage and creates a lot of pressure for the enemies. And Reyna can still get one more orb as well. Reyna is a skirmishing juggernaut on pistol round, and getting both of her orbs will allow her to heal up and re-enter the fight ASAP. And of course, that's also why the ghost is her ideal weapon of choice. One of the weaknesses of buying a ghost is obviously that you can't buy armor and therefore are susceptible to one shots by other ghosts. But with her heals, Reyna holds the power of a strong pistol that can fight at all ranges while also benefiting from having a massive HP pool. Brimstone is a simple man, and that is reflected in his pistol round buy choices as well. He will benefit from running with a ghost and three smokes as his ideal loadout. Since Brimstone is the main smoke for his team, prioritizing three smokes for his team will allow him to block as much vision as possible throughout the round. However, Brimstone is unique because he also greatly benefits from the Frenzy as well. His stim beacon affects the Frenzy's fire rate when he stands within it, and the gun's fire rate becomes greatly increased. And due to many enemies having zero armor on pistol round, his Frenzy will shred opponents way faster than the ghost body shots will. An alternate ideal loadout for Brimstone is a Frenzy, two smokes, and a stim beacon to take advantage of the full power of the Frenzy stim combo. It really depends on what your goal is during the round, but after you get your first few multi kills with a stimmed up Frenzy combo, it will be hard to go back to the Ghost. Learning how to theorycraft loadouts and game plans on a whim can often be hard for a lot of newer and inexperienced players. That's why you should check out our website ProGuys.com where our Radiant and Immortal level coaches can teach you the fundamentals of solid planning and decision making, or assist you with anything you need guidance on. With that being said, let's continue. Omen's pistol round loadout has changed significantly since the start of episode 3. While it may be enticing to buy Omen's flash on pistol rounds now that it's cheaper, it's an investment that will not have as big of returns as you think. Omen really needs both smokes so he will need to concede his flash and buy a second smoke for 100 credits. Since he needs to buy a second smoke now, it's often better to hold off on buying the flash unless you want light armor. Omen's ideal loadout will therefore be a ghost, his second smoke, and his shadow step. Shadow step gives him mobility, which allows him to get on top of objects for a nice off angle to get a kill or escape bad situations. And it's also the only other thing he can buy. With all that being said, if you have a specific game plan for your flash, then it's still fine to purchase. But if you're just buying it for reactionary purposes, you'll have trouble getting value out of it compared to a smoke. This kind of situation would present itself in coordinated play, like 5 stacking in ranked, playing in tournaments, or in pro play. But do it at your own discretion, because more often than not, skipping that second smoke will have consequences if you can't make a play with that flash. Phoenix is a simple agent, and with that, his loadout is fairly standard as well. Phoenix can go Ghost or Frenzy and should opt to get a flash for entering around the map. Phoenix is usually at the front of a stack that's pushing, so the flash brings much needed power to create space. He also opts out of armor since he can heal himself with his molly after fights. While his firewall is a good tool for cutting off information and getting into sight as well, the price point is just too high at 200 credits, especially with Phoenix's new flash that costs 250 credits that also has to compete for value, since buying both won't even net you armor anymore. Phoenix is a duelist that can also benefit from using a Frenzy since he is usually trying to run it down on enemies anyway, so he will be put in more positions to capitalize on the Frenzy's power, but it's up to you to decide. Killjoy is a special situation on pistol rounds, because she has different first round buys depending on what map she's on and whether she's attacking or defending. When attacking, all she needs is a Ghost and a Nano Swarm to take care of business, as her turret is more than enough utility for a pistol round. In fact, her turret is one of the most powerful abilities for pistol rounds already. It provides a ton of value to her and her team for being a free ability that she gets on a recharge cooldown. On defense, it might be better for Killjoy to go for armor and two mollies. Killjoy wants to screw over the attackers as much as possible and two nano swarms gets that job done. If enemies push a site where all her abilities are set up, it's near impossible for them to take the site unharmed. A great example to think of is how Killjoy holds B site on ascent and split. Rather than beefing up your gun game, you have great abilities to stall pushes and deal enough chip damage to make your classic shine. Even though KO is an initiator, he is very similar to other duelists in the game with his ideal loadout. He benefits from running a ghost and buying his flash. 
His grenade runs into the same situation as Phoenix, where if you buy both, then you can't afford light armor or any gun. KO's flash, just like Phoenix's flash, allows him to clear out tight spaces and close corners to create that opening pick for your team. However, KO's flash is very versatile, so he can help his teammates entry as well, which is why a ghost would most likely suit him better. Also, his suppression is a great tool for info gathering and stalling, so you would normally want KO to stay alive deep into a round. Breach is another unique agent because he can have multiple loadouts that could benefit his team. On offense, Breach utilizes a ghost and a flash very well to get the ball rolling for his team when attacking, similar to KO. On defense, Breach can go for the same setup as well if he wants to set himself up in the round. However, his aftershock is also very strong for deterring rushes and flushing out opponents. And his flashes are great to set teammates up as well. That's why in some cases you can offer double flash and aftershock if you have a game plan for supporting your teammates. The main reason is because you can't buy armor with a flash and aftershock, so it might be better to specialize in a supportive role for the pistol round. Breach was affected a lot by ability price changes, so depending on how you want to play Breach, your pistol round purchase will change. Before we move on, we have to get to our question of the day. Today's question is, what agent do you think is the strongest on pistol rounds? Personally, I think Reyna has a specifically busted kit for taking over pistol rounds, since her heals are insanely valuable for what they can achieve, and breaking past one-shot headshot range for Ghost is great for keeping the ball rolling. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Now, let's get right back into the video. If you started playing Valorant before Episode 3, you would remember that Jet used to have some nice pistol round setups because of how cheap her abilities were, but those days are now long gone. Jet's abilities aren't as crucial for her winning pistol rounds, so she always opts for an upgraded pistol like a Frenzy or a Ghost. But now she can only afford one smoke. Sometimes, pro players and high elo Jet mains opt for a Sheriff because her other abilities don't give her that much value in isolation. Also, Jet's kit on defense could benefit from buying an updraft to allow you to play on top of an elevated off angle, but that comes with sacrificing a smoke. Simply put, after all Jet's abilities got a price increase, there is no optimal way for her to buy abilities after buying an upgraded pistol. As such, it will mostly be an upgraded pistol like a Frenzy or a Ghost, and if you're feeling crisp, a Sheriff. Ray's used to also have an insane pistol round buy, but after her boombot got one of the most ludicrous price increases out of all the abilities in the game, her pistol round power has greatly decreased. Ray's previously used to buy boombot for free information on pistol rounds, but after its massive price increase, it can no longer be purchased with a ghost or a frenzy. It seems to be too expensive with too little return on investment to be bought on pistol rounds now. With that being said, Ray's has no need to keep her classic to buy satchels, so she should opt to buy a frenzy to entry for her team and buy a satchel for mobility, which is pretty useful on pistol rounds. Cypher's pistol round strategies function similarly to Killjoy's because they are both sentinels. Cypher's standard buy is a ghost, tripwire, and one cage, and this is for both offense and defense. He is usually in charge of watching his team's back, so he doesn't have much freedom in getting creative with his pistol round buys. While many people don't stray away from his standard pistol round setup since he is a passive player meant to gather info for his team, there are instances on defense where if Cypher's left alone by himself, it's not a bad idea to hold onto his classic to buy one tripwire, two cages, and light armor. In those uncommon circumstances, buying an extra cyber cage will greatly help him stall until his team arrives to support, as it functions like a smoke with bonus information. Astra's ideal pistol round loadout is pretty straightforward because her stars cost 150 credits each. If she buys 3 stars, she can't afford armor, so if you only want to use stars, then I guess going for 4 stars is a possibility but not recommended. Buying 2 stars means she'll spend 300, which leaves just enough for a trusty ghost. There's really nothing much you can change, so this is basically what she'll always go for. Yoru is also straightforward and is not different from his duelist counterparts, so he can rock a ghost or frenzy and take a flash with him for entry purposes. His footsteps are not a high priority for him to buy at all throughout the game, and he certainly does not need them on pistol rounds. So spend those credits on a flash and shoot away. Viper, just like the other Sentinels and controllers, has a specific defense and offense pistol round buy. On offense, if you know your lineups, Viper's Molly is very strong for post-plant situations, so prioritizing buying both could be a good option along with light armor. Plus, her Toxin Wall is already good enough for Vision Denial and Control. Additionally, her Poison is already very strong on Pistol Rounds, and enemies who walk through them will be weak enough to get one shot in the head by a Classic if they didn't buy armor. On defense, her Smoke and Molly are both very valuable, so it might be better to buy one of each and get armor along with it. However, you still have a choice to pull out the Ghost if you want to, but it won't be as beneficial for Viper as other agents specifically due to her Decay abilities. Sage is one agent whose pistol round bias have changed a lot over the episodes, and episode 3 once again brings new changes to how she plays pistol round once again. A lot of Sage players who are trying to support their team to the max will sacrifice fighting power to buy her wall and slows. This is effective both on offense and defense, and since Sage isn't expected to frag out on pistol rounds, she isn't losing too much. Previously, before her wall cost nerf, she could get a ghost and buy her wall, but that is no longer an option. So she must decide between buying the ghost and a slow or wall and armor. 
Generally though, it will be a question of whichever one matters more to you. In my opinion, Sage's wall is very strong for pistol rounds, so it could be a good idea to opt for armor instead, or just go full support with slows. Sova is pretty straightforward for an initiator. He benefits from a ghost and both of his darts to maximize his potential on pistol rounds both on offense and defense. Sova never really bought his drone on pistol round because his darts are powerful damage tools that can be used to get kills on pistol round. His recombo is enough info gathering to help him get his job done, so there is no need to keep his classic and buy his drone or armor. His shock darts also allow him to participate in the post plant meta when attacking, so that's even more reason to buy them over a drone or armor. After the episode 3 price changes, Sky's pistol round loadout now looks a lot like KO and Breaches. First off, Sky wants to get a flash, so she can't purchase other things if she wants an upgraded pistol. While it may be tempting to take Sky's Tiger on pistol rounds for info, her flashes are way more powerful for the value they provide in total. If you want to be the ultimate team facilitator, you could keep your classic and opt for her heal and two flashes, but this is a very expensive buy that is somewhat risky if you're not in a coordinated 5 stack to take advantage of it. Well guys, that's all we have for the most optimal pistol round loadouts for each agent. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and drop a like. We upload new videos just like this one every single day, and the best way to stay notified of that is by ringing that notification bell. Also, don't forget to check out ProGuides.com to gain access to some truly amazing coaching. This has been your host, Sergeant Frost, and I will see you guys in the next video.